Hey everybody, Kim here with LittleBiz Resources, and today let's take a look at how to get customer emails from Etsy. Okay, so before we jump into that, let's cover marketing omnipresence just real quick. And marketing omnipresence is when you show up in all the places your customer might see you in marketing channels, right? So like if let's say that your customers are on Facebook and Pinterest, and they obviously open emails, then you would be on all of those channels. Now you would start by adding marketing strategies that improve your odds of success. So don't jump and do all of the marketing channels at once, but start by adding on different marketing elements that are going to improve your chances of making money, of increasing your customer base, et cetera. That is emails, right? You need to capture emails. And even if you don't want to do email marketing, which you should, but if you don't want to, you need to capture customer information. Now, why get customer emails from Etsy? Etsy's sales are actually Etsy customers. Now, this is a shift that they made following Amazon's, they, Amazon pulled back all of their, um, at the access to customer information and Amazon customers are Amazon customers, right? So they try, if you are, if you fulfill or sell on Amazon and you fulfill through Amazon, you don't get customer information anymore. They just say, oh yeah, you made a sale. Here's, I don't even know if they give you the city anymore. They used to give you the city, but I haven't checked recently. I sell uh, merchant fulfilled, so I get the customer information as far as to fulfill the product, but they tell me I am not supposed to be using that information for any purposes, right? Etsy, on the other hand, and we'll talk about this more in a minute, lets you capture the customer information, but you can only keep it and use it under certain circumstances, which we'll talk about in just a second. So you have to think about this is why would you want the customer emails then if you're selling on Etsy? And you're like, well, who cares if I'm selling on Etsy? Etsy's managing that. It's their customer. They'll help drive people back to my my um, shop. Maybe not, first of all. But what happens if you lose your Etsy account, right? This has happened to a lot of people recently. Now, I'm not going to say that this is going to happen to you because it may not. But there are plenty of people that are having, you know, like, for example, I have a, a strike against my account. It's not a valid strike. There's nothing I can do about it. But they can literally just shut down my account and claim that I'm violating their policies, even though I'm not right? There, and there's nothing I can do about it. Nothing. So I want to make sure that if my customers, especially the ones that, that want my information, if they are looking for the product that I offer, that they can get it again. So that, that's something that you would want to collect customer emails from Etsy for is to at least have it so you can communicate with them or use those emails to market to them later on if something happens. Then you can drive traffic to additional offers, your website, your social media, etc. We'll talk more about that. All right, so how do you get customer emails from Etsy, right? That's the, what everybody wants to know. And it's funny because I'm surprised at how few people actually think about this or know this process. Now, if you want, you can manually copy emails. There will be an exception to that in a minute, but that is the manual way to do that. Now, I promised you a free method that didn't, that was automation, not manually, right? That's to use Aweber. You can use Aweber to collect emails. Aweber integrates directly with Etsy and you can get up to 500 emails. So you can collect up to 500 emails with the free version. Now you can, as a, as an alternative, you can use a different integration to connect to your preferred email marketing software if you don't like Aweber and I wouldn't blame you for that. So let's look at an example method for capturing emails free automatically. So you sign up for a free Aweber account, again, free for up to 500 customers or emails. Then you set up the Aweber so Aweber inside has a um, section where you would have to send an email and invite them to your list. So you go in there, you set that, and you invite people to your list when they make a purchase. So the customer makes a purchase on Etsy, and because Aweber is connected to it already, Aweber will automatically send them an email to invite them to sign up to your list. I, my account does this. I have multiple Etsy's, and I have Aweber connected to one and it automatically sends an email out to customers and invites them to subscribe to my list. And if they don't want to subscribe, they don't have to, right? But if they do subscribe, that is them telling me, yes, you can have it. And this is where we need to make sure that happens. Etsy has rules for capturing emails. You agree to these terms when you sign up as a seller, right? So Etsy permits you to collect customer emails, but only if they give you permission. And you're like, wait, Kim, this seems contradictory. How can I email them if they didn't give me permission? This is where the rules are. So you can use a third party platform to do this as well. And so it's whether you're using Aweber, your own third party platform, or you copy and paste, the customer must sign up and agree to share their email with you. So 
in a copy paste method, you would have to somehow invite them, whether that's through Etsy messaging or you, you copy it and put it into your third party software and it automatically sends in that first one. So if you think about this from email marketing, if you've ever heard of a double opt-in, this is what Etsy wants is a double opt-in. So again, you need to make sure that, so you can do the initial email that invites them, but if they do not agree, you're not supposed to email them anymore. Okay. So if you're using your a third party platform and you're using integration, you need to make sure that your email marketing software has it set up for, um, double opt-in. So that way they are agreeing to it. Now, what do you do with the emails? Now we're going to talk about some examples because obviously if you're into email marketing, you're going to see them leaving off a ton of opportunities here, but these are just a few that I thought I'd throw out and make you, let you think about them, right? You can drive customers back to your shop, your Etsy shop for other products, sales, specials, etc. Now Etsy used to have a system and we, my sister and I both noticed, uh, not that long ago that Etsy stopped really driving traffic back to shops internally. And I'm sure that's part of their testing, but they would send out notifications whenever you're running a sale, whenever you're doing different things. And they, if you added new products, they'd send out a notification to your followers saying, Hey, there's new products on here. If somebody liked a product and it went on sale, they say, Hey, a product you liked went on sale. We've noticed that while they still do that, it's not as often. So like my sister follows me, but she doesn't buy from me. And that might be the difference, but she follows me. And so she gets notified. So if I do a new product, let's say I did a new product every day for two weeks, she might get one notification in that two week period. Sometimes she doesn't get a notification for an entire month. I run, I used to run sales like every week and she would, she would get a notification once a month, maybe. So instead of four once a week, right? She would get one notification saying there was a sale. And we noticed that when that happened, when that shifted, we had a huge decrease in the number of people that were coming back to our shop. And my sister has products that nobody else has. So when people search, they're going to find her anyway, whether it's on Google or anything else. But for me, I have a lot of competitors. So if they're like, oh, hey, they're not loyal to me. They're not following me. They're not getting notified. This is a great way for me to send an email out to them and say, hey, don't forget, come back to my shop, right? Now you can direct customers to an alternate location. So your own shop. So if you have a Shopify account, if you have a, um, you know, a, a WooCommerce if you are on a different marketplace, such as the one that we're releasing, anything like that, you can send them somewhere else once you have their email. Now, the, another thing you can do is you can invite customers to follow you on social media, right? So if you're like, hey, I'm really trying to build up my Facebook page or my Pinterest uh, followers, or maybe I have a YouTube channel, you know, I want to, I want to increase that. You can invite your customers to follow you on social media channels. You can invite them to join a Facebook group. If you have a Facebook group about it, you know, whatever it is, if you have forums, if you have a forum set up or a special forum that you, you know, you're like, Oh, Hey, my customers are really like this. You can share information with them. There's so much you can do when you have emails and you're doing email marketing. Now there are some things that I didn't actually add on here, but another thing is if you don't want to do email marketing, well, and that's actually, if you don't want to do email marketing, you can still, you still need to have their emails, right? You still need to have their emails and their permission, right? Because this gives you your customer list. And once they've said they've agreed to sign up and you're doing a double opt-in, you can use those emails and you can load them up into say Facebook for specific targeting. If you wanted to do ads, or you can just have the email list in case something goes wrong, you have a base to start with. You have somewhere to start. You need that email list to start. And so this is why we, I created this video is because if you're selling on Etsy and you're not capturing emails, you are missing out and you're, you're setting up your business for failure because it is inevitable that Etsy will find a problem with your account unless you're one of the few people that's somehow getting away with it and they're not looking at you. I don't know what the trigger is that like, there's some people, the, the strike that I got, there are dozens of people selling the exact same item. And none of them have a strike against them for it, for the exact same product, right? And so obviously Etsy has a trigger for when you get, when you get in trouble and when you don't get in trouble. I don't know what those are, but that it exists. So you are setting yourself up for failure if you're not c capturing emails. Now, Aweber has its quirkiness. Okay. So if you're like, oh, hey, yeah, I, I want to do this email marketing stuff. I'm going to connect Aweber. Oh my gosh, I hate Aweber. Well, you know what? You might want a third party platform, right? So you might want to do something else. Like we, I use Mailvio. I actually use a Weber, run it through an integration to Mailvio, which I don't have to do anymore because I found a different integration. 
but I'm not ready to switch it yet. So that's what I'm doing right now. And I'm like, oh, I love Mailvio. And I'll put a link into Mailvio for those who are interested in a third party platform that's a little bit better on mail deliverability, right? Like when I'm using, when I emailed with Aweber, even though like the, this is after people have signed up, right? They've already agreed to it and everything. All of a sudden, it's like it's not working right and Aweber won't deliver. They, it's delivering to spam. We've tested it multiple times and just keeps delivering most of them to spam, even though people did a double opt-in. So I use Mailvio and I have, um, let's say if I had uh, maybe a 5% reach under Aweber, I'm at like 15 to 20% with Mailvio. And actually, that might be a click-through rate. It might be higher on the reach. So I'll have to look at those numbers. But Mailvio is much higher. So on deliverability. And that's without people agreeing through Mailvio. So once I switch it, it'll probably be even better. Now, integration with any other third party, and I, this is as far as I've found, it's going to cost money. Whether you're going, like what I'm doing, where I'm going from Aweber to an integration to Mailvio, I pay for the integration and I pay for Aweber. If you're going to say, hey, you know what? I don't want Aweber. I just want to go straight to my other system. You're going to have to use something that integrates with Etsy. So Zapier, as an example, does not integrate with Etsy. You're like, wait, why'd you mention it? Because most people know that. So know what Zapier is. And so a system like Zapier could, and there are several out there. And once we get one that works, well, we'll share that information with how to do it and everything. But the one I was using wasn't working very well. So there are some out there. There's one I'm working with right now that I'm going to do some testing on. And it's going to cost money though, right? It's going to cost you X amount per month. And then you're also going to have your third party platform. So if you want to do it free, if you're like, hey, I don't want to spend any money to get started, then start with Aweber and change later right? That's all you need to do. All right. So that is how you capture emails on Etsy. And if you're looking for more marketplaces to sell on, right, we've been talking about this on our channel. If you've missed it, we are starting our own marketplace and you can sign up for our marketplace in the link in the description. You are welcome to join our Facebook group and you can ask questions here on the video. You can ask questions in the Facebook group. You can come live each week and ask questions. Now, check the channel banner for the most current live time. We've had to I had to move. And so I've got some scheduling changes and, um, depending on what, what part of the year it is, kids activities and everything, it could change. So just check the channel banner to see what our current schedule is for our live Q and A each week. And that is it for today. I appreciate you watching. And if, again, if you have questions, please reach out.